Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the FSW, Carrier-to-Noise Measurements. In this presentation, we'll show how to make carrier-to-noise measurements using a Rodian Schwartz FSW series signal and spectrum analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of carrier-to-noise measurements. We'll provide a brief review in a few moments, but please see the separate presentation, Understanding Carrier-to-Noise Measurements, if you'd like a somewhat more detailed introduction to this topic. Carrier-to-noise measurements are standard spectrum measurements on the FSW and are supported on all FSW series analyzers. There are actually two different types of carrier-to-noise measurements. Standard carrier-to-noise measurements are simply the ratio of the carrier power to the noise power within a given bandwidth and has units of dBc. Carrier-to-noise density is the ratio of the carrier power to the noise power, but with the noise power normalized to a 1 Hz bandwidth, so units will be in dBc per Hz. Both of these measurements can be used to quantify the amount of power in a signal relative to the amount of noise, and these types of measurements are made in many applications, two of the most common examples being satellite and cable television systems. When making a carrier-to-noise measurement, the largest signal within the spectrum analyzer's span is defined as a carrier with power C. A channel bandwidth must be defined, and the noise power, N, is then obtained by essentially integrating between the channel limits. In the case of a carrier-to-noise density measurement, the noise power measured within the channel is normalized to a 1 Hz bandwidth. The values of carrier power and noise, or noise density, are then used to calculate the ratio of carrier to noise. Note that because these are power measurements, both the carrier and the noise are measured using an RMS detector. If the carrier lies outside of the user-defined channel bandwidth as shown here, only a single sweep is needed to measure both the carrier and the noise. However, if the carrier were within the channel bandwidth, the carrier power would be included when integrating over the channel, and the result would be an incorrectly high noise level. In this case, a two-step measurement process is needed. First, a single sweep is run, and the power in the carrier is measured. Then the carrier is switched off, and a second sweep is run to measure the noise alone. In this way, the carrier-to-noise ratio can be calculated and displayed after the second sweep is complete. To make carrier-to-noise measurements on the FSW, press the Measure Hard key and then select either carrier-to-noise or carrier-to-noise density from the list of available power measurements. Note that the selection can also be made within the application itself. Carrier-to-noise is a standard spectrum measurement and does not require any additional hardware, software, or license code. Here we see the main carrier-to-noise measurement screen. Configuration settings are accessed via the buttons on the right. The default view shows both graphical results as well as numerical results beneath them. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll explain how to configure measurement parameters and interpret the results. The most important setting in carrier-to-noise measurements is the channel bandwidth. This must be entered by the user, and the value of the channel bandwidth will vary depending on the measurement application. The other important parameter is Adjust Settings. Pressing this will both enable the RMS detector, which is the appropriate detector for measuring power, but will also set the span to twice the configured channel bandwidth. The Carrier to Noise Config dialog also allows a user to choose between Carrier to Noise and Carrier to Noise Density measurements, although this setting is also available directly from the main GUI. Now let's look at an example Carrier to Noise measurement result. At the top of the default display, we see the graphical or spectrum view. Note that the FXD marker has been automatically placed on the carrier. The configured channel bandwidth is indicated by a pair of blue vertical lines, and at the bottom of the screen, numerical results are given for both the marker values 
as well as the channel bandwidth and carriage noise ratio. It's worth noting that varying the channel bandwidth in a carrier to noise measurement will affect the results. As we can see from these examples, the carrier to noise ratio will decrease as channel bandwidth increases, assuming of course that the carrier power remains constant. This is because wider bandwidths will increase the total noise power and thus lower the carrier to noise ratio. On the other hand, because carrier to noise density normalizes the noise to a 1 Hz bandwidth, changing the channel bandwidth does not lead to any significant change in carrier to noise density, assuming that the noise is white or uniformly distributed across the channel bandwidth. Let's end with a brief summary. Carrier to noise measurements are standard features on Rodian Schwartz FSW series signal and spectrum analyzers. Carrier to noise is the ratio of the power in the carrier, C, to the power of the noise, N. Noise is measured over a defined channel bandwidth and may also be normalized to a 1 Hz bandwidth, in which case it's referred to as noise density or N0. It's important to remember that if the carrier is within the channel bandwidth, this carrier must be turned off during the noise measurement. This is sometimes called the two-sweep method since one sweep is used to measure the carrier power and then a second sweep is used to measure the noise with the carrier turned off. Carrier to noise measurement results are displayed both graphically and numerically on the FSW. And finally, remember that changing the channel bandwidth will change the carrier to noise ratio but will not significantly change the carrier to noise density ratio. This concludes our presentation, getting started with the FSW, carrier to noise measurements. If you'd like to learn more about carrier to noise, other spectrum measurements, or spectrum analyzers from Rodian and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.